Hello everybody, welcome to Tim Time Projects. Does this radio make my head look big? Uh, right here we're working on a Kenwood TSA-20. I'm not going to do a lot of diagnostics on it, you have to take my word for it. If you watched the last video, I was saying how on 10 meters I'm only, I'm only getting about uh, half power out. And I actually ran into that problem before and I found that I had a, a tube laying around for this. And it was the driver tube and I put it in. And that took care of the problem. I have no idea what the actual condition of that tube was. Because even the one that wasn't putting out the full power tested okay. Uh, and it's only on 28 meters. So I got a couple of new tubes uh, from a fellow on eBay. And there advertises new old stock, new in box. So we'll see what happens. So I'll try one of those. But the main thing my display kind of quit working and it quit a, a long time ago and I tried all those things that people say clean this clean that and everything and nothing seemed to work uh, but this time I had kind of just left it alone and I actually had it taken apart so I could try to do some diagnostics on it and once you know the whole time it was apart and never did any issues so I put it back together and that was probably a few years ago but I put it back together uh, when I powered it up uh, a couple of weeks ago for the first time in a while, the display just didn't work. And it seemed like if I left it on for quite a while, it would start to work, but uh, it was real intermittent. So I'm gonna pull the display dry, the display unit out of this, and the main thing I'm gonna look at is the capacitors. And it sounds like the furnace is getting ready to kick on, so what I'm gonna do right now is just open it up right. and we'll get it ready to go. And all the so, screws, the silver screws, you don't need to take the, these black ones out of the side here, but all the silver screws out of the top and bottom panels I believe. Oh, that's a success. You gotta un unplug the speaker right here. All right. Move that out of our way. I'll put this somewhere that it's not going to get destroyed. Uh, and then let's see what we gotta do. Get the bottom case off. Should be good to flip this on its roof. What I'll do is I'll put a rag or something down to catch it so that it doesn't scratch anything up. I always like to put something down if I can. I always clean all the dust and debris off the table before I put a radio on. But you know that goes. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it over. All right. Here's the bottom case, I think. Right. This has a switch on it. You can see the little switch here. That's because it has the uh, optional uh, filters. So you flip the switch. Some people take it out and actually use, I think they use the heater switch. I, I didn't want to change any of that. Okay, so the vacuum tube we're talking about would be, I'm going to flip it the other side. Because I need that side up in the air. The vacuum tube, I'm going to replace the drivers right in there. And if I remember, it was a bear to get it out of that silver uh, can that it was in. Thing you th wouldn't think would be the problem. The main thing I want to take out this is the, uh, the digital board right here. I want to take this out. It's not real hard to get out. Got connect from the top, connect from the bottom, four screws. Those you gotta fish around for a little bit because they're in there. You gotta just kind of find out. Here's the board, here's two of the screws here, and I think there's two back. There's one inside there and one down here. They're not really hard to get at. Just gotta work around the uh, the wire harness. So let's see. There's 
one. Don't worry if you can't see what I'm doing because I can't either. In fact, I'll probably just turn the camera off any second to uh, keep from running in a long time. If I do that, I'll just have to cut it. So let's see, here's the other one, I believe. thing fall so yep that means it's loose a magnetic tip screwdriver is kind of helpful when you're doing these things there you go that's not magnetic tip but I do have one of those tools that you stick in that magnetizes it so the next thing I'm going to do is open up this board it's actually two boards in here So I, the main thing I want to do is get a look at the capacitors in here. Uh, we'll check for bad solder joints, but they're always so hard to find. So I just figured while I had it open for the uh, tube replacement, I'll check the capacitors. This is a couple electrolytics in here. I think I looked that up before. It's always fun to tear these things apart and see what, see what's going wrong in them. All right, last of the screws. Come on. So, and like I said, I, I've looked at this before. I think what I'll probably end up doing is replace the capacitors and. Go over with a fine tooth comb, I guess, as far as looking at all the solder joints. Let's see, I see one electrolytic here, one here, one here, one here. None of which look like they've leaked yet. Alright, and then there's, a, there's it's actually a board underneath, well, I mean, in between. There's another electrolytic here. But Put my magnifier on so I can see what I'm looking at here. If I find anything of value, I'll, I'll, I'll clue you in. Alright. So what do I have? 100 microfarad at 50 volts. Uh, 22 microfarad at 50 volts for these two guys here. Now that's actually a parrot making those noises. 10 microfarad at 50 volts and whistling. 10 microfarad at 50 volts. What are you? 100 microfarad at 50 volts. And 10 microfarad at 50 volts. I'll go get some parts. See what I have. And while I'm here, I'll take a look at these all the solder joints in the immediate vicinity. That'll be kind of boring for you, so I'll be back. Alrighty, after further look at these capacitors here, uh, I looked at them on there. They don't look factory, and I guess at some point I must have changed those. But what I did find, and it's, I'm almost positive, is the problem. These Molex connectors that go here. I'm going to try and zoom you in so you can see what I'm talking about. Put them under the light, and we're going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in. Oh, it's really a heck of a zoom. My 
hand out of the way. And let's see if I can show you what I'm what I'm seeing. I don't have the microscope set up down here quite yet. But if you look at 5G, you can see the copper where the Molux connector sits in there. Ah, it's, it goes down in here and gets soldered to that. I'll take and see if I can zoom it in a little bit more here for you. Come on, will you focus? Yep, a little bit more. And I don't know if you can see the same thing I see, but there has never been any solder melted on that right there. Looks like there might have been a little bit around the edge. So you're thinking, well, it solders into the back. Well, remember, that's going to be the one closest to that. There's nothing for it to solder. There's no pin or no uh, trace that comes up to that for it to solder. So it solders here. And the only way to get the solder to get onto that is when you put this here to really heat it up and let the solder wick up. Well, that's all well and good, but you can't guarantee it. And to me, it doesn't look like it ever quite made it onto that. There we go. You get a better look at it. I know that these kind of connectors have always been a problem with things, but it never really dawned on me until I was just looking up saying, I wonder if it, a it actually looked like there, this trace wasn't soldered at five. Now, there might not be anything there. I don't know. I'm not going by that, but... I'm almost guaranteeing that that's going to be the problem with this. Uh, you know, it fits the bill of a loose connector. <laughs> so anyhow, that's where I'm at. Let me see what I can do with this Molex and see if I can find a better way to get that to solder. I thought maybe if I took the pins out, soldered it, and then slid the connector over top. But I don't know if you can do that with these kind of connectors. So we'll be back. All right, so here's my thoughts after looking at this connector here. I'm going to take and you can see how gold that is. That's never, solder has never touched those contacts. <clears throat> I'm going to take them and tin them, put a good amount of solder on. Then I'll put this back through and heat up. And if it doesn't look like it penetrates, I'll use a little surface mount soldering tip on my solder and try and solder it in from the top. I looked at maybe trying to modify this connector to make it work so I could drop the plastic on after, but that just won't get it. That'll make it, it won't be strong enough to hold the actual pin terminals that are in here. So that's what I'm gonna give a shot. I don't wanna do too much to it because you can, I don't know if you can actually see, but some of the traces, are, they're very thin and they're they're aged, so <clears throat> I don't want to break anything, anything more than I have to. So anyhow, I'll give that a shot and we'll see how it works. So let me get started with tin in that. Alrighty, I soldered that up. Where are you at there? And my goal was to mainly make sure that the points where there were actual connections were heated. So you'll see there's some connections on this side of the board and some on this side of the board. So what I did was for this side, I actually heated from the back and put my solder through the little slots in the Romex, in the, in the Molex rather. And uh, that seemed like it penetrated pretty well. I did both connectors and I just cleaned the flux off. This side of the board, you can clean it, but the problem is, is they coat it with that, uh, it's like a varnish almost, just to protect the board. I don't know if they spray it on or brush it on or what, but uh, the alcohol, it'll start to melt that, and then it actually looks worse, so. Uh, anyhow, that takes care of that one, so let me do the other one. It took probably, oh, I don't know, maybe a total of 10 minutes to do it. I did not pull the entire connector back off, I, the only reason I pulled the one off was to get a look at how things were. 
Um, hopefully I can get away with it on this side too, just basically reflowing it with some fresh solder. So I'll let you know how it goes. Alright, let's see. So, the counter started acting weird again. And I couldn't get it to come on. I just wanted to take a look inside the cupboard here, the PLL cover. And I just moved these Molex connectors around a little bit. And now it comes on fine. So what I'm going to do is pull it off, reseat it, put it back on, and see. And then perhaps I can pull it out by those standoffs. I tell you not to use any magnetic screwdrivers or anything in here, so. Alright, everything's put back together. It's powered on. Hopefully, the sparks don't shoot out of somewhere. Um, Well, the display is working fine right now, but that's one of those things where you never know when it's going to do it. Well, we'll leave it sit and come down and try it again later. Uh, it's still kind of cool, so... Okay, well, I just wanted to show you the... Uh, this connector here that comes from the, the DG, the digital display board, it, other than going to power and, and uh, the tube on the top connection, the, the display, actual display, it comes out of here, it goes to the PLL board, it also goes to the filter board. Now I know that I've had the filter board out before and have cleaned the connections, not because of this, just because I had it out. I never took this cover off. So when I took it off and saw the Molex connectors, everything looked okay. I didn't, I'm not going to go play around and uh, try and create more problems. All the solder joints in there actually look very good. And the Molex connector didn't have any of those top joints like they do inside the DG meter. So, all right. So we'll let it sit a while. I'll turn it back on just to see what I get. Power on. Still working perfect. All right. I don't know, maybe maybe that's your problem as well. Maybe that was my problem. Only time will tell. All right, I just removed the relay board, which was in here. It has three Molex connectors on it. And two screws, one there, one there. And then the board comes up. And I'm going to knock out these two guys right here. And got some new some new devices here, but a uh, whole lot smaller. Where that's going to work out with the, with the through hole. And I also got some other new caps, but uh, I'll be putting some new caps in. And uh, where are we at there? There's these guys here. I'm trying to get them out of the paper for the bag there, and there we go. I'll get them out yet. There's no, they're, they're in yet another bag. Alright, so let's see. These two guys, 2200 microfarad to 25 volts, same as what these are, considerably smaller. So, uh, alright, I'm going to throw them in real quick. And I got the, the two main power supply caps and those two power supply caps. They're on, these guys are on order, so uh, we'll keep pressing on here. Uh, 
the uh, digital display has been working fine ever since I cleaned the Mullux connector in beside here. So if you're having that issue, definitely check these. I mean, I've had these off a million times. Well, not a million, but a bunch. So, all right, I'll be back. Let's see, so something kind of interesting. On well, these capacitors, I'll try and zoom in and bring one up to you. There it is, let's see. There's actually three terminals on them. I'm trying to get this so I can figure out how to do this. So there's actually three terminals on them. Maybe if I turn this off. Yeah, there we go. The, uh, if it would just focus on it, that would be great. Right. Come on. There it goes. I don't know if I can just figure out how to get it in the camera. Anyhow, there's three terminals, and one has NC. Probably no contact. Quite possibly because this is such a big capacitor that was uh, basically used as an anchor point. And if you look at the uh, at the board where it came through on both sides, there's no. Uh, you want to call it no trace that leads up to it, just nothing. So, never saw that before, but there it is. I'm trying to get this to focus. I wish it would just focus. Just please focus. I don't know. Anyhow, these are the original capacitors you'll find in the TS820. Okay, just wanted to give you the, the little finding. Let me see if I can zoom in here enough. show you inside here. Yeah. Maybe if I turn it on it'll help. I don't know. A little bit. A little bit, huh? Alright, so these terminals, the positive and the negative, they're actually put on with what they call wire wrap. That little little gun you put the wire in it it spins it around real quick so you put it over the post put the wire in it and bloop, it makes it sound just like that it uh, wraps the wire up so I'll unwrap the wire pull that up I'm looking for a solution because you know the new the new capacitors use just they call them the snap in and they're basically much shorter than the, the terminals that stick out of there. I mean, I could make them work, but I'm looking for other solutions or options. Uh, you'll see what I mean, because there's one, two, three, four components or four wires zipped onto that, and it'll be a little bit tough getting forward on here. I mean, it could definitely do it, but let me see what my options are. Anyhow, I'm gonna unwrap that, and you can actually just start at the top and work your way and un unzip it and pull it out, where cut it, whatever you want to do. Just another thing to show you. Alright, it's maybe a more accurate test, at least in my eyes. I'm going to pull the tube out. I'm curious to know what happens when I don't even turn the heater on. Because we're not making it that far anyhow. So let's just see back on pin 2 here on the vacuum, where the vacuum tube would be. Alright, so let's see. I'm curious why drive would have any effect on that with no tubes in it. Let's go back to 28 somewhere. Well now we see that it's not the very end of drive. Of course the waveform looks kind of yucky, if that's a technical term. Let's try it here. I think that's 28. Let's shoot for 21. As you see, it's getting a little bit higher. Now, this is before any filter, so that may explain why the waveform looks so terrible. Let's see what that one. 
Yeah, that wave doesn't look a lot better either. But it is bigger. As is that one. Okay. So, we know that the signal going in to the driver doesn't look too good. Well, that doesn't look too good, but it's considerably less. It's probably half what the others are, which would explain the half power output. Okay, so that's what I wanted to check. If I took the two by, what was the effect? It could be something as simple as dirty contacts. I don't. All right, I did come upon something. 28.9999, almost 29, set it to 25.5. Hit the send button, almost 100 watts. See the drive, how high that's come. All I did was, go back over here, reconnected up the, uh, this has an aftermarket um, CW filter in it. So I'm sure if I go back there, when I switch that from narrow to wide, you're probably going to see that drop back down. Or from wide to narrow, you'll probably see that drop back down. So, have a look into the anomaly of that. Let's see. Let me zoom in there. Let's just look at the power. Hit send. Okay, that's on... Uh, it's on wide. Flip it over to narrow. Oh, it's coming down to 50, it looks like. Let me, get, let me get over there. A little bit more than 50, roughly. And if we turn on wide, yeah, a little bit more than, we're about 100, actually. So, what the heck? Anyhow, now to look into that filter. All right, so I narrowed it down to be, these are the aftermarket filters. They're made by uh, Tango Fox, or Fox, the Fox Tango, yeah. Um, and then you take the filters that would have been here originally, you put them on a, a board in the back. But uh, what I really want to show you is, this is by far the easiest board I have ever removed from a radio. There's one screw, two screw, three screws, and you can actually push down on the connectors. You don't have to lift it back up. You can push down on it from the top, and you pull them all off. This would come right out if it wasn't for the aftermarket board here. Uh, but I want to take a look at this, this board in particular and maybe try running something through the filters, uh, a signal through the filters, and see how they how they turn out. But I want to I'll clean the board up and everything while I have it out. And... There's a couple capacitors here I I felt a little little shaky about, but uh, yeah, I don't know if you can really get a good look at trying to do it without removing the wires. But this is an aftermarket board, and this is this relay here controls whether you're on narrow filter, wide filter, uh, sideband, or CW. So you can kind of do that and I can explain how that works in a later video but this one was kind of getting long and this has been going on for so long I don't even remember where I left off but it's basically they use little diodes in the circuit to switch them and when you bias the diodes forward the signal rides on the on the DC voltage and it lets it choose which filter you want it's a pretty neat little idea but I know Ken would use I'm sure everybody uses it actually Okay, well, thanks for watching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of cut this short, and it would probably take me forever to edit this video because it seems like it went on forever and ever. Take care.